Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. I have another one of these to look at, little Magbox Linux IPTV box. Customer says it's dead, I believe. He gave me the power supply with this, a little 12 volt, one amp power supply. I've just checked it, I'll show you guys. So, power supply is good, okay. Let's just plug this in and see what it does. So there should be a blue light on the front of this. And it doesn't light up, nothing's lighting up, okay. What I'll do is I'll actually connect this to my bench power supply. It's easier for me to see what's happening because I can see what current this draws. I know roughly what this should do. So I'll just get another cable and attach it to my bench supply. This gives me a much better idea of what's going on even before I open this up. I'm not totally sure which way round this goes, so let's just check first. We have the polarity correct. No, it's the wrong way round. Good job I checked that, yeah. It's the right way round, okay, and it's working. So, quick look at the power supply. We'll just plug this in and see what it does. And there's a short somewhere, you see that? So straight away the constant current light comes on 5 amps. This has a short. You see how useful that is? Bench power supply, guys. Okay, let's see if we can find the short. Here is the PCB. If you've watched the channel, you've seen these before. We have a few different power rails on here. So, this is your 12 volts coming in here, okay? This is a 3.3 volt regulator, which I think is actually that chip, as I recall. This is one volt. There is a buck converter here. We can soon tell by measuring from the coil anyway, which is which. This is the 0.95, which supplies the main CPU. That's that one. A 3.3, another 3.3. I think this 3.3 is a standby, actually, which is the little regulator. And this is the main 3.3 volts. 1.5 volts DDR, so this is for the RAM. Okay. And there's a 5 volts over here for the USB. B. Okay, that's this one. I think that's all the power supplies we have on here. So let's see if we can see any shorts. This chip is on the input. This is the one that commonly fails actually. So if you look, you'll see that we have a thick track going down to this inductor here. Okay, I'm sure that goes to this chip somewhere. Let's just get the multimeter and let's check some resistances. Okay, so let's have a look here. There's a capacitor here. And we read a short here, okay? There's a short there. One end of this goes to ground anyway. I think that actually goes to this chip. Let's see. From this end, actually, the 12 volt end. That does go to that chip. Okay. And that chip goes to here. Off one of the pins, I'm sure. Maybe that one. Yeah, it goes to there. And there isn't a short to the 12 volts. Okay, so I think the fault is in this area. We can just check the resistances on all these other rails, though. So let's have a look. So I'm going to measure from each of these coils to ground, starting with this one on resistance range. Yeah, that's in the kilo ohms. This one, 18 ohms. Okay. That powers this chip, so you'd expect that to be fairly low. This one, 3.3, should be fairly high, I would think. Yeah, kilo ohms. The RAM, I think, maybe about 60 or 100 ohms, something like that. Actually, that reads much higher than that, okay. I thought that would read a bit lower, to be honest. Yeah, 1.7k. And the standby, which is here, the standby 3.3 should read high. Yeah, 
So something as short in this area. These all look okay, which is nice to see because it means there's probably no other problem down in here. I think the fault is very much somewhere here. I have quite often seen this little capacitor here go short. So we'll really short here for sure. Yeah, same as there. Okay, and this chip I've seen go short as well. So it's probably one of these three components. I think we can stick some current into this and just get the thermal camera and hopefully it'll show us which one. I wouldn't be surprised if it's that capacitor, but we'll see. So you'll see if I short the leads together. Yeah, just under two amps. I don't really need five amps going into this to get something to warm up, I don't think. And the danger is if you have such a high current, you may burn something out that's at the moment short and then burning it out, you may, depending on what the component was that was failing, have the 12 volts go all the way straight into this circuitry and destroy the device. So just keep the current down to something at least reasonable, I think. And two amps seems plenty to me. I just put my fingers, that's where the chip is here. I have my finger at the moment on the capacitor so you guys can see we're in this area, okay. Can you see them there? Let's find out. So I'll connect the power. I'll switch the power supply on and let's see what happens. So we have two amps and something's hot. Okay, in this corner here, can you see it? And it looks like, I'll just get something insulated, what's hot? It seems it's something in here. It's right down on this edge somewhere. You see that's the power connector there. So just in front, I think it's one of these capacitors here. Another good way to prove this, by the way, if you don't have the thermal camera, is to take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, put it on the area and plug this in and let's see where it evaporates fastest and first. Well, you can see it's around these capacitors. That went first. I'll just uh, switch it back on again. You can see there's liquid still around the chip. Okay, put a bit more on. So one of these capacitors is definitely sizzling away. Yeah, I think it's probably the, the back one. Okay, but we know it's one of these two capacitors. To be quite honest, if I unsolder one, the other will probably come off anyway. I think it'd be that small one, but let's have a look. So I can take the bigger one off. To get that small one off, I probably need to get this out of the way anyway, so there's no great issue with unsoldering that first. So we'll unsolder the big one and see if the short's gone away. You could determine which of the ones it is, probably, but to be honest, it's probably quicker just to do this. Yeah, the spend time actually trying to figure out which of these two it is and probably still have to unsold the other one anyway to do the job so we'll go this way i'll try my c210 soldering iron this time this is quite nice for these sort of components especially when it's a little bit cramped around here so we'll use this one i think a bit of solder on both ends of that okay I have the soldering iron set to 380 centigrade, by the way. That was just normal leaded solder. I added it's not anything chip quick or anything like that. So we take that one off. Do we still have a short? I think we probably will have. I think it's going to be the other one. That's just from a bit of experience with these things. Okay, let's see. Well, there you go, the short has now gone away. So in this instance, it was the bigger one. Right. So I'm zoomed in a little bit better. You can see this is ground, this is power coming in, okay, so. We don't have a short anymore. The two capacitors are wired across each other. So if I can just get my meter leads without crossing them, yeah. 
A bit like Ghostbusters don't cross the beams, yeah. So you can see that connects to there and the other end connects to here. Now I don't know exactly what value this is. I probably should measure one off a scrap one sometime. But to be honest, guys, it doesn't matter. This capacitor, if we look, we just go from the 12 volts coming in. Connects directly to here. And the other side, we know, goes directly to ground. So this capacitor is wired directly across the input. Okay. It's also in parallel with a small one. Now, this is just smoothing or filtering. It'll probably work quite happily without that capacitor even fitted as long as the smoothing on the power supply is pretty good. The reason we have the capacitor here is if this is kind of like the current's changing, it's drawing as the thing's working, this helps to maintain the voltage here. So we don't have a problem with voltage drop down on the cable, but it's probably like a, a belt and braces sort of thing, so I'm sure it would work without it. The reason we have two, one handles low frequency or longer duration, changes in the current and the other one is a much smaller value and handles high frequency spikes this is going to be something like 100 nanofarads this one is going to be probably 4 to 10 microfarads and it honestly doesn't matter so i'm going to find a capacitor of that sort of range and put it in there's the old one i think that's an 0805 size yeah, this is an 0603, so it is bigger than that. The size will affect the voltage. So you can see 10 microfarads in 0603 is a 10 volt capacitor. So that is below the supply voltage. We shouldn't be fitting something like that. A 2.2 microfarad in 0603 is a 25 volt. That is fine. But if you find an 0805, I'm pretty sure that's going to be more than 12 volts. So here are some uh, 10 microfarad 0805s. Let's see if that's the right size compared to the one we took off. Yeah, it's exactly that size. So with these sort of capacitors, just sort of take consideration of what the supply voltage is. If it's the same physical size, it's probably okay. You will find with these MLCC capacitors that the higher capacitance ones have a lower voltage. I'm going to put one of these in. I think it's okay. I probably could go and look for something like 10 microfarad 0805 and see what voltage it is. I could also throw caution to the wind. But seeing as I have mentioned I can do that, let's do it. So 0805, 10 microfarad voltage. It says that they are 50 volt. How about that? Yeah, and that won't really matter on the manufacturer, really. That should be for any capacitor of that size. Interestingly, Mouser says a 25 volt, which is fair enough because they're both more than 12 anyway, so what does it matter? So we have a suitable replacement. It could be that 50 Chinese volts equals 25 Mouser volts. Who knows, but it's not a problem either way, for us at least. Let's just clean up the pads first on the PCB. I'll actually use my other soldering knife for this, the T12 and the BC3 tip. Same temperature, 380. It just is more suited for this sort of thing. Yeah, so quick that came off. Seeing as this is in my hand, we'll do it. So. little bit of solder on that pad okay get my capacitor i'll just uh, get it flat on the board yeah hopefully the flux will just hold that to the pcb with a bit of luck just get it lined up okay i'm happily switching backwards and forwards with soldering irons today you can see that Okay. Yeah, it's not quite level, but these two things are in parallel with each other anyway. I'm not too bothered. <laughs> the OCD isn't working well today. Okay, so I'll solder this end. Now, probably 
the capacitor will come loose again. So I'm just going to hold it down just to stop it going anywhere. Okay. I have enough solder on the end of the iron. I think. Yeah. Okay. So there's our capacitor replaced. Not totally the tidiest job, but certainly good enough, I think. We can check for shorts. Okay. The bleeper isn't on, but you can see the meter. So from here to here. And the short has gone, okay. Right, let's clean that up with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and let's try it. Okay. Just apply the power again. We can watch the bench power supply. Hopefully the LED will come on. Okay, we'll see. And we'll also see the current draw, which should be 200 to four or 500 milliamps, depending on what it's doing at the time. Okay. Yeah, 240 milliamps, the LED is on. Okay. So let's connect this to a TV and see if it works. Okay, guys, so you can see up on my TV over there, it is actually working. That's great. One happy guy. That's a well worthwhile repair, actually. These boxes are about 100 euros to buy one. They're not so cheap. Uh, Infamir, who make them, are a Ukrainian company based in Odessa, so they have a few issues, yeah, which makes them a bit, a bit harder to find. In fact, to be quite honest, second-hand ones are fetching almost as much as new ones because they're just difficult to obtain. So, for the amount of time that took and one capacitor and the guy can have this back today, that is well worth repairing. Okay, hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you all again soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.